2024. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, to the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, if we can have roll call. Messina. Here. Fleming. Here. Ingalls. Here. Lutrip. Aye. Here. Coppice. Here. McCracken. Here. Ward. Here. Okay, thank you. If you can join me in the pledge, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Okay? You good? I need approval of um, December 12, 2023 Planning and Zoning Commission meetings. I motion we approve the minutes from the December 12th meeting. Okay. Second the motion. I have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I need approval of minutes for the December 13th, 2023 joint workshop uh, that we had concerning um, or with other uh, cities. Um, I motion we approve the December 13th joint workshop meeting. A first. Second. I have a second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. At this time, it will be public comment, and that's anyone who wants to speak on any other item other than what's on the agenda. So if you have some comments you want to make, come on up. Just uh, give me your name and the city you live in, that's all. Uh, Bill Irving, I live in Coeur d'Alene. Go ahead, Bill. Midtown. Um, first of all, good blustery evening. It was quite a walk down here from Midtown. Um, I'm a member of the Ped Bike Committee. I've been oh. riding a bike since I was seven years old. Um, lived here in Coeur d'Alene since 1986, except for five years in Spokane. And I'm really here to uh, find out and uh, find out how the commission works to be able to encourage a more pedestrian and bicycle friendly community. Um, like I said, I've been riding a bike since I was seven years old. I'm 71 now. Um, I love to ride. Um, when people are able to walk or ride their bike to be able to get to many daily um, functions in their life, go to shopping, restaurants, places like that, if they can, if they can get there by bicycling or, uh, ride, or walking, within a fairly easy distance, they're much healthier than people who are uh, dependent on a car. Um, there have been many studies that have been done about the benefits of a bikeable and walkable community. I'd just like to go through a, a few of those for you. They, I'm a retired counselor, and so one of the things that people who, are, who live in a community where they can walk or bike to get to many daily activities they not only are healthier, but there's much greater social engagement. Mm -hmm. We live in a country that's basically having a loneliness epidemic. There are many people who haven't had a close friend, don't have a close friend. They're really disengaged from other people. They take their car to work and back and really don't much engage with other people. So they're socially isolated and the consequences on people who are isolated like that are significant. They're the elevated risks of stroke, heart disease. Um, if you live in an area where there are many cars and you can't get someplace without taking a car, tailpipe admissions are huge. Asthma rates are, are quite high. Uh, many things um, really affect people when they have to drive. I'm not opposed to people driving. I drive a car. Um, I like to ride a bike, but there are certain places I have to take a car to. But the option is different than the dependency on a car. So I'm here to find out um, both what the commission does that I might need to know that might be able to further what it is I'm up to. Um, also, when people live in a walkable and bikeable community, the economic development is, is significantly um, impacted. The value of a home goes up when you live in an area that's highly walkable or bikeable. People want to live, work, and visit a place that has that, uh, those, those capacities for people. 
Um, obviously, when people are driving less, we have much less congestion. Is that a – Go ahead. Am I getting – okay. Get another minute. Okay. Um, the other aspect that I want to speak with you about is parking. Because we can't have a bikeable and walkable community when parking has such if they if there are really high requirements for parking imposed by the city, parking is both expensive and takes up a lot of space. Difficult to have an affordable housing um, community when um, there are onus parking requirements on developers and people moving into this area. So I'm here to see what we can do to, to minimize the requirements that the city provides for people to, to build here and to, I, I wanna reduce as much parking as possible. There are lots of examples of uh, parking lots that are not full at all and that car storage uh, diminishes people's housing, people's being able to ability to aff afford housing where they want to live. <clears throat> so those are the primary things, um, and I, I'm interested to know whether is anybody that you might, anybody from the commission might recommend I speak to about those two things, both parking and biking and walkability. Um, certainly there are a number of other committees that you can certainly talk to those people, but Hillary, do you want to address or perhaps direct Oh, is this Hillary? Some direction as well. Yes, and I, I owe you a phone call. I know you talked to our senior planner, Sean Holmes. So, yes, yes I'm one of the people you can talk to Wonderful. about the parking. And then uh, Chris Bosley, our city engineer, would be good to talk to about. I know, I know Chris. Okay, perfect. Great. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And Peter wanted to make a comment. Well, just, we get a packet for each meeting, and okay. it's online. It's, it's open to the public. And, and uh, they comment on it. Park and Rec and Monty McCauley from uh, on Pikes will, will comment on bicycles and so forth. So there is a system that's there. May not meet your needs, may be not as thorough as you want, but anyway, that's that's one area it'll go. And the same thing with parking. And yet, uh, 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 we as, are as interested in, you, in it as you are. Great, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time, uh, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, moving on to staff comments, Hillary. All right, good evening, commissioners. Just a few announcements. So just want to remind you that after the hearing tonight, we'll have a recess and then we will reconvene for a workshop to discuss findings of fact. Also, our February meeting, I believe you've all RSVP'd for that. Those that can attend, we're moving that. It will not be on February 13th, it will be February 27th. So that we could have quorum and that we'll have just one item. It'll be the PUD amendment for the Atlas Waterfront Project. Also, there's the joint workshop on January 22nd on Atlas Waterfront with City Council and Ignite, CDA and the Planning Commission. And then wanted to give you a quick update on the impact fees. So the hearings will be next week. So Council did approve the code amendments that allow us to move forward with impact fee changes. Uh, so next week will be adoption of the capital improvement plans for the parks, the transportation, fire, and police, and then adoption of the fee study, and then adoption of the fees if council elects to do that. So keep you posted on the status of that. Okay, appreciate Thanks. it. Thank well, uh, Go ahead, John. The, the, uh, the 22nd workshop uh, is, is at noon? That's correct, it's at noon. Right in right. here? It'll be in here. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. <clears throat> at this time, <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to go to a, a public hearing, and there are sign-up sheets. If you want to uh, make any comments, please make sure you sign and sign your name and uh, the city and uh, fill out all the blanks that have to be filled out on that. I appreciate it. Uh, and then um, once, yes. Yeah. There's still council uh, uh, commission comments. I do have one. Oh, you have. A I, I, I oh, apologize. I'm sorry. I, I, I skipped right over. Uh, you. Go right well, ahead. Well. <laughs> The, in the last meeting we had, I had inquired about River's Edge and what they were doing there, and we reported back that uh, uh, that they have not uh, progressed far enough to prevent, present the revision to the council in some fashion. Uh, I, I, we as planning, you know, like the meeting we're having here, we, we talk about things and we, we take some action. So there's a level of expectation, I think, that people have that what we do here uh, is follow through on. <clears throat> now, yeah, the, the property owner has all the rights in the world too. They, 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 they don't have to do certain things, but I, I'm wondering if there's, if we have some 
uh, requirement to uh, uh, keep the public posted in some general fashion at certain points in time. Uh, and secondly, I'd like you to take some time, uh, you know, council maybe, and come back in a, a meeting from now or two or three from now. But as, as I understand our planned unit development, we set them up and, and there's compromises on both sides and the, the city and the property owner reaches an agreement and it's a pretty, they're pretty good deals for everybody. Everybody knows very well what's happening. Well, as, as this goes on, if we're having one that has been approved and one that has been approved by us but hasn't followed through by the, by the property owner, my question is do we have an issue on which PUD takes, play, it takes precedent? The first one, which I assume does, and, and, but I don't know. <laughs> and secondly, if there are conflicts between the, the first PUD and the second, where in the second a certain thing was provided for, but in the first it wasn't, or vice versa, which, which takes control? What I'm concerned is, is that we get to a point where there's enough confusion, and certainly not, not uh, anybody's part, maybe other than mine, is that they, that provisions of the second PUD are implemented in the first, and it causes issues, or, or more seriously, the, the items of the first PUD are implemented, and then they want to go back to the, to the second one. It could cause just a lot of a, a lot of confusion, I think. And, and it, it would be nice if you might look at that and see if we do have any issues we have or anything we need to. And maybe you know the city system is so well formed that I'm. The problem is I don't have enough education. I don't know. But if you would look at it and come back to us in some in a week, a meeting or two, I'd appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Okay, uh, getting into our public hearing, the first item is GS4. Property is the applicant. Location is the southeast corner of intersection of 15th Street and Best. Uh, the request is a proposed zone change from neighborhood commercial to C17. The item is ZC-1-24, and Mike, you're going to give us a yes, overall. Thank you. Good evening. This is the public hearing for item ZC-1-24. The applicant is GS4 Property LLC, and they are represented by Fusion Architecture. They're requesting a zone change from neighborhood commercial to C-17. The property is located at the southeast corner of the intersection of 15th Street and Best Avenue, and legal notice was published in the Coeur Press on December 23rd, 2023, and all other required notifications have been made. Here's a lo location map indicating where this property is located. Here it's highlighted in red. This is Best Avenue. This is 15th. Here's a close-up aerial photograph of the property highlighted in red. Again, this is uh, 15th Street here and Best Avenue. You see the property is currently vacant. Here's a bird's eye view looking north, and here's a bird's eye view looking southeast. The applicant has submitted a site plan indicating if the zone change is approved, how they plan to develop the property. They plan to put a, a gas station with a mini mart and a quick serve restaurant down in this corner with electric charging stations. This is from the applicant's narrative. The applicant has indicated that they will be incorporating similar aspects as to the existing gas station and store that is located on the northeast corner of the intersection of Celtis Way and Atlas Road. Items such as low profile signage, no LED reader boards, fuel, fuel refilling not to be excessive, limiting the number of fueling stations, electric car charging potential, fuel canopy lights will be turned off after 11 p.m. There are four findings that need to be met in order for a zone change to be approved. Findings B8 through B11. We'll go through each one of these, starting with B8. That this proposal is or is not in conformance with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan's future land use indicates that this is in the mixed use low place type. Place types represent the form of future development. Each place type corresponds to multiple zoning districts that provide regulatory guidance on items such as height, lot size, setbacks, and allowed uses. The mixed use low place types are highly walkable areas, typically up to four stories. 
These place types is typically developed along streets, street grid that is excellent pedestrian and bike facilities. Compatible zoning jurisdicts within the mixed use low place type are C17, C17L, neighborhood commercial, and community commercial. The comprehensive plan indicates the existing and planned bicycle and walking network, also existing transit network as it relates to this location. There's an existing bike on 15th, bike lane on 15th Street, sidewalks on Best, and the nearest transit is on the corner of Best and Government Way. The next three sides, slides represent comprehensive plan goals and objectives as it relates to this zone change request. The first goal is under community and identity. The goal would be Coeur d'Alene citizens are well informed, responsive, and involved in community discussions. The objective would be to foster broad-based and inclusive community involvement for actions affecting businesses and residents to promote community unity and involvement. The next goal is under growth and development. Develop a mix of land uses throughout the city that balance housing and employment while preserving the qualities that make Coeur d'Alene a great place to live. The next goal and objective is also under growth and development. The goal would be to ensure appropriate high quality infrastructure to accommodate community needs and future growth. And the objective would be to ensure appropriate high quality infrastructure to accommodate growth and redevelopment. The full list of the comprehensive plan and the goals, goals and objectives is on page 11 of the staff report. The next finding is finding B9, that public facilities and utilities are or are not available and adequate for the proposed use. This application has been routed through the city departments, engineering, streets, water, fire, police, parks, and wastewater departments for their review and request in regards to the public utilities and public facilities. Each department has indicated there are adequate public facilities and public utilities available to serve the proposed zone change request. See page 11 and 12 of the staff report for the full list of departmental comments. Finding B10, that the physical characteristics of the site do or do not make it suitable for the request at this time. The site is generally flat and slight drop in elevation toward the east part of the property. There are no topographical or physical constraints that would make the subject property unsuitable to change the zone from neighborhood commercial to C17. Here's a topogra topographical map indicating the topography. Each line represents a five foot drop in elevation. Here are some site photos of the property. This is on the northeast corner looking south. This is also on the northeast corner looking west on Best Avenue. This is on the north central part of the property looking south. This is on the northwest corner looking east along Best Avenue. And this is on the central part of the property looking northwest through the property. The next finding is finding B11, that the proposal would or would not adversely affect the surrounding neighborhood with regard to traffic, neighborhood character, and or existing land uses. The city engineer has indicated that convenience, market, and gas pumps from the ITE trip generation manual can be estimated that this use will generate 133 morning peak, peak hour trips and 153 evening peak hour trips. It is assumed that many of these trips would be bypass trips rather than diverted trips. It is unlikely that this use will adversely affect the traffic on 15th Street. 15th Street is a major collector that experiences over 1,000 trips per day. The Kootenai Metropolitan Planning Organization's traffic model predicts a potential maximum of 1,200 vehicles per hour. But capacity would largely be controlled by the traffic signal, which can theor theoretically move over 1,700 vehicles per hour. Future 15th Street improvements will upgrade the traffic signal to better accommodate the traffic. Access to 15th Street will be limited to approximately the south half of the parcel to ensure approaches are not within the functional area of the Best Avenue intersection. Here's the existing zoning. This is neighborhood commercial, and the proposed zoning is C17. As you can see to the north, there's R12, C17. It's R12 to the east. I mean, to the west and to the southwest, some R17 to the south, and this is in the county ag suburban. 
And the C7 district is intended as a broad spectrum commercial district that permits a variety of commercial uses, in addition to allowing residential development at a density of 17 units per acre. This district should be located adjacent to arterials. However, joint access developments are encouraged. The following is a list of some of the principal uses that are permitted in the C17 district. Banks, daycare facilities, kennels, department stores, restaurants, hotels, hospitals, gas stations, veterinary offices. The full list is on page 21 and 23 of your staff report. In the existing commercial in neighborhood commercial zoning district, the following uses are permitted. Commercial professional office, daycare, medical, dental, parks, personal services, and residential above the ground floor only. <clears throat> the following uses are prohibited in the neighborhood commercial, which would be commercial parking, detention facilities, gas stations, industrial, mini storage, warehouses. The following are some of the development and design standards for the neighborhood commercial district. So hours of operation, there'll be hours from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Developmental and design standards, at least 50% of any floor wall facing an arterial must be glass. If the building does not abut the sidewalk, there must be a walkway between the sidewalk and the primary entrance. Buildings must be designed with residential character, including elements such as pitched roofs, lap siding, and a wide window trim. Surface parking should be located to the rear or side of the principal building. These are just a few of the developmental design standards for the neighborhood commercial. And for the C-17, there's also design standards, which is regulated for all new construction in the C-17. Here's just a list of a couple for building design. We'd screen the rooftop equipment, the windows facing the street, would it be visible from the street, and the parking lot would have landscaping and street trees along the frontage. In addition, we will have dumpster screening and other design standards that are required for commercial development. Here's a land use map indicating the current land use. Property is currently vacant to the north is to the north is single family attached housing, commercial gas station here, single family dwellings located here, and to the south, multifamily. And zone changes that have happened in the past. In 1982, we did a zone change from R12 to C17 at this location. And the decision point tonight is to provide a recommendation to city council regarding the proposed zone change from neighborhood commercial to C-17. And the, you will need to consider this request and make appropriate findings to recommend that city council adopt the C-17 zoning or not adopt the C-17 zoning. Additionally, the commission may recommend conditions for this zone change which where such conditions are required to ensure that proposed uses of the air area are consistent with the community needs and its public health, safety, and general welfare. And that concludes my presentation. Questions for Mike? Go ahead, John. I've got a few, a few questions. Uh, thank you, Mike, for your report uh, presentation. You know, I, I always thought that, uh, you know, listening to others up here that, you know, one caution, I guess, that we hear is that, uh, you know, an applicant brings forward a proposal of vision you know it's going to be a gas station it's going to be great it's going to have all these wonderful features to soften it and, and this and that and but you know once the zone change takes effect you know the 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 applicant could change his mind sell the property it becomes who knows you know a, a bar you know whatever you know um, that kind of thing. So help me understand, you know, if, if we're, if we condition things like you have to turn the, the lights down at 11 o'clock, you know, one of the examples, yeah. um, how, how does that, how does that survive into perpetuity somewhere, you know, where, you know, he sells the, the property and it's the C-17 doesn't go away and right. what happens with all those things? Well, the help conditional me. zoning will be a record on the record and the planning department will know and the building department will know so when it comes forward for development those conditions will be implemented and if any of those conditions would be needed to be changed or wanted to be changed they would have to come back to planning commission to request those changes so those changes those requirements would be permanent and part of whether this develop if he develops the gas station or any other development comes through those conditions would follow follow the property thank you and the question i had on on traffic uh you know, and 
maybe others will have some thoughts on that as well. But, you know, it's it's hard to really tie that down. Your staff report talks about kind of an estimate. But would it be fair to say that, you know, that it's possible that a development by right, you know, today the applic app the owner of the property could pull a, a building permit for any number of uh, neighborhood commercial uses tomorrow. <clears throat> and some of those potentially could have as much uh, the same or more traffic impact than the than the proposed vision. Would that be a fair? That would be, that would be correct. And we have the city engineer, if you want to get specifically on those traffic counts and those uses. But yes, if that per, the applicant or the owner of that property has neighborhood commercial rights and they could come in and build a project right now under those uses. Thank you. Yep. Um, I've got a question as far as traffic, a little bit what John was saying. Is there anything that it will just be in and out on 15th, nothing going off on PEST, or is that something when it goes through design? That would be best to talk to the city engineer about or ask him that okay. question. Chris is here. We can ask him that question, I guess. Okay. Any, Pete, go ahead. Well, I think I misunderstood. If, if we approve this, <clears throat> then the, the property owner doesn't have to build a gas station. He can do anything he wants with it if the meets the C-17. Is that That's correct? correct. Okay. Okay. Secondly, what are are there? What businesses are there on uh, East Fifteenth, from the North City limits to Sherman? East. Not mean, very many, right? Fifteenth to South to Sherman. No. On, there are, there are a of, few sporadic. There's a couple of grocery stores. Uh, uh, down by the high, by the middle school. Middle school, yeah. They're very, they're very, very few. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. And Dalton. Uh, any other? Oh, go, okay, here, Chris. Mike, I, I uh, want to talk about the comprehensive plan for a second, just get a broader picture of what it's intended to do by 2042. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see writing in there that talks about this was developed and approved by the citizens of Coeur d'Alene. That's correct. Okay. We have multiple public hearings. Public hearings to say public this is what we workshops. want. workshops. Right. Yep. And then when we look at this region in particular, it lists as potential zoning uh, areas everything from NC to C-17. So those are both in this area where people had envisioned. That is correct. Okay. So uh, was that intent of that based on urban sprawl and growth, or was it based on what was there at the time when the comprehensive plan, people saw there was a C-17, they saw there was an NC, and they're like, yeah, these, these things are intended to stay. It's a based on multiple things, but that is one of the one of the items they look at what's existing there but they also look at growth where is growth going to happen and where is traffic going to happen where where is the need for these commercial nodes so to speak do we need a little something on a corner here to support the residential that surrounds it so there's a lot of aspects that go into locating this as a mixed use low not just what's existing now okay. it's envisioned what it should be in the future and then being somewhat new at this it, it, in the end, it's the owner of the property who's going to make a educated guess that we think this is a service that people want, so I'm going to put this in here. Sometimes it succeeds, sometimes it fails. But to the point of others, when they talk about C-17, there's a laundry list of things in there that this property could become in the future. And then I also heard about conditions. Is there any way to make conditions on what the property could become inside of C-17? Uh, I don't know about the uses, but you could definitely condition... I, I saw the lights at 11. Yeah, Understand certain other that, items could be conditioned. But not the actual uses of it. I would want to check with. We, yes, we could. Okay, we could. Yes. Limit the uses of Limit the that uses, you can limit done. the hours, you can limit a variety of things. Thank you. All right, just to clarify on that note, Hillary, so uh, depending on how this goes, let's say it, it gets uh, approval, but we can put a condition that this piece of property must be as presented a gas station with whatever the applicant applicant has put in in his narrative and say this is it and if anything changes from that he has to come back you can make that recommendation so I guess to, to clarify a point that Mike made earlier so Planning Commission makes a recommendation it's ultimately City Council right. that would make the decision on the zoning and if there are conditions in place but Planning Commission has the and ability to, to City recommend Council. City Council makes the final Yep. So if there was a change in the future, if there was conditions approved and we had Tapley cabinets as a good example of conditional right. zoning, 
they had, they're trying to sell it and the realtors had to keep calling and saying what would be allowed because we know we have conditional zoning. So it does run with the land. They understand there's limitations. <coughs> to amend the conditions, they'd have to go back to city council. Okay, great. Thank you. Go ahead, John. You had a Thank question. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. I'll put you on the spot just a little bit, Mike. Okay. Uh, not to, not, to, not yeah. to be tough tonight, but, uh, <laughs> but the applicant me mentioned, mentioned uh, and you shared with us uh, this project at uh, a, a little gas station convenience market at uh, Atlas and Celtus and saying it, it might be as like that one, you know, uh, saying that's a positive or whatnot. You know, I remember sitting up here when, uh, you know, just to the east of that uh, gas station, there's a little PUD. I think it was called something like Circa on Atlas or Circa, or, on, Celtus. Circa on Celtus or something like that. So I ask kind of rhetorically, you know, is, is that a good fit? Do those two work well, uh, literally butting up next to each other? You don't have to answer that. I just throw that out there, but what what would be different? Is there a difference here in terms of uh, that scenario, in terms of who came there first, or you know, was the Circa on Celtus on C17 to uh, to begin? Was it all C17 to where you know they weren't a newcomer, if you will? You follow me? Where in this case, this is a newcomer. Is any of them? Is that? Can you I think touch on, on the it? circus on Celtis, circuit on Celtis, it is that PUD is in the C-17 and the residential got developed in the C-17 for a PUD and then the gas station came later. So if I bought a house in there, there's kind of a caution, you know, you, you know, hey, right, right. I, I was there. I came first and I, I have I my know. house. I can't complain now that this develops like it did because I should have known. It was there. Yep. Thank you. Mike, on this piece of property, was is this always been in the city, or was it out of the city, or? I'm not for sure when this got annexed. I think it. But it did in get the, annexed into the city at some point. In that's time. correct. And it was annexed in as C17. It was annexed in as C17. No, it was annexed in as NC Neighborhood Commercial. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Neighborhood Commercial. That's correct. That's how it did get annexed in, but I'm not quite sure when it got annexed i think it was 82 but uh, i'd have to look ago. i think it was yeah. 82 okay because okay. i don't remember it coming when i've been on this commission that okay we saw the cannot yeah. be a little while so i don't remember quite. yeah go ahead I think I, yeah uh, real quickly mike looking at the uh, photographs you're shown in graphics and so on i just want to uh, it was annexed in 2011 in uh, item a-1-11 2011. So it's in the front page of the staff report. Oh. You don't remember? No. I am. I don't remember that. <laughs> Sorry. I uh, think I was even legal at that yeah. <laughs> On the east side of 15th in the immediate area and on the south side of Best, and looking at the grass, everything is residential in one form or another, duplex, single family, or. And they did submit a site plan for us to review. That's and the site plan, I believe, shows two curb cuts into the proposed gas station off of 15th Street. So basically, the use for people who live east of 15th Street and north of Best is, makes it a very awkward situation for them to get in, get in and out of there, I would think. Those, those entrants aren't approved. They're just proposed. And the city Thank engineer you. will review those. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Chris, you want to come up and address my question about in and out on Best or 15th Street only based on what we have in front of us tonight, or how can that be addressed? So your question is about access on to Best? Well, yeah, whether or not if this is approved and, um, and there, or can we, or do you recommend not having any access on Best at all? or? Um, well, the applicant has only showed two access points. I did talk to him a while back about that, and we just wanted to make sure that they were out of the functional area of the intersection, meaning it wasn't going to conflict with left turns in the left turn bay up at best. Mm -hmm. um, an approach on to best would work, um, and it would be similar to the gas station at Ironwood and Government Way. 
um, there on the same south southeast corner where if you're trying to turn left oh, out of there, I, it's easier to turn left at the signal than to turn left onto Government Way. This would be similar where it would be easier to turn left onto Best and make that left turn to go south on 15th and fewer conflicts than if you turned left out of the gas station onto 15th Street. I see. Okay. Okay. But they haven't proposed uh, an approach at that location at this time. Okay. All right. Thank and, you. Any questions? Yeah, North 15th, um, are we planning to widen that road eventually? It is, it is not slated to be widened, but it will be improved. Um, we have this project in design right now that goes from Harrison to Best. It will be three lanes the entire uh, length, center turn lane the entire length, bike lanes on each side, shared use path on the east side um, for much of it, um, all the way from Cherry Hill Park up to Best. And then um, there will be signal improvements also at this intersection. Okay. Any other questions for Chris? Yeah. Go ahead. One more. Uh, we've gotten a lot of letters from people that are concerned about the property increasing traffic flow mm -hmm. and safety associated with that. It sounds like in the report from the engineer's assessment, they don't predict additional traffic flow or any issues with safety. Well, there very likely could be increased traffic flows, but what I put in, uh, in my uh, staff report comment was that I see that a lot of the trips are going to be uh, pass-by trips, meaning they're already heading up 15th Street anyway and they need to get gas. I doubt somebody who's living on the west side of town or whatever is going to go out of their way to come to a gas station. Um, it's going to act similar to the Nom Nom does on the northwest corner. Um, it'd be more convenient if you're going northbound to hit this gas station, southbound to hit Nom Nom. Um, fewer conflicts that way, but some people will probably avoid one gas station and choose the other one instead, and that's where conflicts could happen. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Thanks, Chris. Thank you. And Hillary, I got a question. Uh, when it comes to plan review, in your department, there's all landscaping and all the setbacks, and you address that a little bit Correct. as far as yes. and I to think adjust Mike adjacent property. Had a slide on there. There's performance standards for either of the zoning districts, and so when we get the the plan in, we would basically review it to make sure it meets all of the setbacks, the landscape, the buffering, any of the parking requirements, bike racks, all of those things. Make sure that the the access, the driveway locations meet. So that would be done by the engineering department. So all the departments would review it, make sure it's going to work before okay, great. construction would happen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. This time I'm going to start with the first person or the applicant. Is the applicant here? Oh, uh, come on up. You have a chance to. I'm also just going to ask for your name, the city you live in, and I'll swear you in. Okay. Uh, Rex Anderson with Fusion Architecture. Okay. And do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony, testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you die? I do. Go right ahead. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, I want to start off by saying, I, as someone that grew up in Coeur d'Alene, um, I... Uh, you know, I live in Spokane now, but I'm, I'm envious of, of the position that, that you're all in and the responsibility that you have. I, uh, like I said, I often romanticize about the, the idea of, of coming back and, and being more ingrained in, in the city. So um, you guys have my respect. Um, I, uh, in, in 2023, Andy um, Singh uh, approached the, uh, the uh, planning department at the city of Coeur d'Alene with this idea of, of this project. And, and I think he, he spoke with uh, Ms. Patterson and, and uh, as well as another planner, I believe. And, um, you know, it was, it was Andy's intent, um, knowing the residential um, feel of this neighborhood to, to bring something in that was of residential scale and something that was a good neighbor to the property. And I think that um, as someone that has uh, developed, um, you know, three of these projects already, he understands the neighborhood connection. He understands the neighborhood that he needs to fit into the context. And so, um, it was it was in his uh, meeting with Mrs. Patterson that they talked about the conditions that that were put forth in the presentation this evening, talking about you know turning lights off after 11, um, you know not 
you know, maybe some low profile signage or what signage there would be, something that he would want to be a partner, you know, with the city, with the neighborhood to, to again, fit in as a good partner. And those, those are items that Andy approached me with when, when we came up with the idea of the zone change. And when we were going through what this zone change should be, Andy played a, a, a role in trying to figure out what would be, um, you know, what would be the, uh, the zone change that would be most applicable uh, to making this happen and, or, or to, to being successful. And, and the first thing that we were uh, pointed toward was the 2022 to 2042, you know, comprehensive plan. Um, and, and aligning ourselves with that document because we felt like that was the most relevant thing that had the most success. And so it was that time that we looked at, at that document trying to understand how that would work. And, and per that, you know, just to, to, to take some, um, uh, some elements from that comprehensive plan, uh, this was taken directly from it. The 2022 to 2042 comprehensive plan is the community's plan. It sets a framework to guide future growth and development, as well as helping making strategic decisions for the next 20 years. It addresses the state of Idaho's comprehensive plan requirements and incorporates the implementation strategies to guide how we achieve the community's vision for the city. Um, it goes on later to say, uh, Envision Coeur d'Alene, who is, who is the organization that helped participate in that document, Envision Coeur d'Alene is the city of Coeur d'Alene's comprehensive plan, which documents the community's vision and implementing actions needed to achieve what thousands of residences, thousands of residents, businesses, and community organizations have said are important to achieve over the next 20 years. Um, with regard to uh, the building type that Andy is looking to build, we have on the, the screen here a, um, a photograph from when his current most recent project was completed at the corner of Atlas and Celtis. Um, when, when I designed this building with Andy um, in 2019 through uh, late 2020, um, you know, walking through the store, Andy's existing store at Northwest Boulevard, um, you know, Andy really walked me through, you know, all of the items that were that were being sold in that store. Um, everything had a uh, level of importance that was specific to the people that came into the store. And, and as you go through uh, this store today, um, it's, it's not a, what you would describe as, as typically a nom nom or a, you know, um, you know, a convenience store. This is, this is, is something that could be much better described um, as a, uh, more of a, um, a store that's, that um, addresses the needs that are, that are local for the community. He has um, quick serve items. He has um, open coolers that provide um, uh, for sale items that people come in and regularly buy, coffee, you know, donuts, whatever he finds a need that his, uh, uh, the people that come in want, he, he adds it into what he's selling. Um, furthermore, I think that, you know, with, with a mind on, on the future and things like that, he is, he's willing to incorporate items such as electric car charging stations um, and, uh, and as well as um, next to, the, next to his, his future store is a um, more of a quick serve or, or retail uh, building alongside of it. Um, going back to traffic, I think that um, uh, what was mentioned with regard to ingress and egress on the site, as well as the landscaping, you know, requirements, you know, it would be um, our next step to have a, a pre-development conference with the city, um, you know, like we did on this this Atlas uh, gas station. We worked with the city, incorporating the comments that they had for, you know, all of the development requirements for it. Um, and then, lastly, I think the. Um, the one thing I did want to allude to that was brought up um, originally is I, I think that, you know, seeing this as, um, as C-17, yes, it does align with, with the, the plan and the, comp the comprehensive plan, but if, if NC were to remain in place, it's our view that the impact on the neighborhood could be, um, you know, it, it would have its own impact, I should say, on the community and what it would be doing with regard to traffic and with regard to the impact on the community. Um, we feel like this is the best use um, for, this, uh, for this site, um, and, I, and I think that's evident with how the, the comprehensive plan has, has laid things out for it. <clears throat> Do you have any questions for me? Question, I've got a quick question. On the, um, the market, I take it that's gonna be developed fairly quick. Is the quick service something that's gonna be rented out to someone else or is the owner 
going to be doing that as well? Or is, uh, it's not decided at this time. And, and Andy's going to come up here and speak in a second, and I'd let him uh, speak okay. to that. Um, but that, that's something where um, in, that, in that C-17 zone would be, um, it would be, would be allowed, but it would be, again, something that is um, relevant to the community, something that would um, serve a need um, to the, you know, to that specific area. But it's basically going to be something that's going to be leased out at some point in time. And my other question is, is the plan, besides what we have here in our package, is it the design kind of going to be similar to that design, or is it going to be different? It, wouldn't, it would not be a knockoff. I okay. can tell you that, Andy. Andy, um, when we went through um, this design and we've we've talked about this project, Andy's you know he he wants to create something that looks good. It's not something that you're going to see like a like a nom nom knockoff, you know, where it's just recycled design. It's something where he has a passion for design, and you know he sends me images frequently of hey, this would look great in this spot. Well, that's not a bad looking building. I'm not saying it's not, that's a bad looking building. I'm just trying to you show us a picture, and then we start thinking, well. This might be what's on the property, and yeah. we have a layout, and well, and I think I, some of those questions. Yeah, and I think I think with this building, he was very, uh, you know, passionate about the raw materials, you know, metal, wood, um, the expression of material to really create interesting architecture was mm -hmm. something that he, he was passionate about during this project, <clears throat> and I and I know he will be, and he's already shown that on this one. Okay, any questions? I, I have of a couple of comments. Um, my son lives across the street in Bo. Yeah. And he needs that place because he doesn't drive, and there's no markets around yeah. at all. So when he's out of milk, that's where he goes. But the one thing for C-17 is that there's no height restrictions on other than residential buildings. So, And this is a tall building. There's no question. It's got that gymnasium height ceiling. Um, I think one needs to look around at what's adjacent and keep it in proportion on height so that you don't feel like wow there's the you know monument to gas um so i if we move forward i just know that c17 should it be approved has no height restrictions other than residential and so that's something that i'll be looking for um but you know you did a great job and and Celtis, who would have guessed that we would have had that much traffic at that point you know that place is always hopping <laughs> yeah, and thank you for saying that i think that you know something that Andy has talked about with this one is you, you don't you know back in the old days when I was when I was a kid Tidyman's was was along Fifteenth uh, or excuse me Best and uh, that's no no longer there it's now a food tr food truck village yeah. so it Andy has talked about fresh produce for this spot and so he he put in a commercial kitchen at Atlas and Celtis he's he's brought me in to show me how he does breakfast sandwiches he does lunch he does you know he does dinner um they do they do espresso with this one here and so um again he is trying to pro to to fill a need and and clearly in this uh at this location this proposed location you know there's a need for for grocery items for quick items like that so yeah. and, and i guess with regard to the height limit you know i when when it's said that there's no height limit you know i know that that is a that is a scary term but but andy is looking to scale down uh, for this one. This one, we were anticipating a couple other items in this store um, that, that got taken out. And so, you know, this is a tough, you know, it is a little harder to, to keep clean and, and, and does have some, some other costs associated with it, but he's looking to have something a little bit more scalable. Okay. I have a, I guess I had a question about the least, which you'll probably answer, but then the size comparison to the two, like on just for, this one, because I'm familiar with this one too, because it's near my house, <laughs> and it's very popular. But how how many square feet is this? This one's 8,500 square feet. Okay, so this one will be considerably smaller. Correct. Okay. Uh, I've got one other question, Rex. On here it shows, I guess, four filling stations and four double pumps or something. It's not going to be, or well, maybe Andy this can a lot. <laughs> speak yeah, to that. Oh uh, no, we'll give you a chance to get up when you do it. I'll let okay. Andy speak hey, to that. It, He's a wizard when it comes okay. to Okay, we'll ask Andy stuff. some of those. There's one yeah. more question at the end of the table. What was that? He had a question. You, uh, you, had, you had a question? A question mark? Yeah, Rex, you'd mentioned at some point that you were looking at scaling down from the initial plan. Was that based off your interaction with the city and trying to figure out? Okay. No, I think you're talking about the original pro this project versus what we're doing here. Yeah, that's correct. We originally were going to have an elevator in this building, <laughs> and and there is a second floor. Um, this one, it it just the same the same model doesn't fit, and I think, you know, it would be it would be way too boring to to put the same thing on the site, and and I think that a building that's more manageable, 
more of a you know a, a size that's that's not quite as tall as this one. Great. So. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, did you have an opportunity to meet with the local re with the neighbors and to discuss this? I have and not had that opportunity. No. It's unfortunate. Thank you. All right, Rex, if uh, you'll have a chance to come back after everyone else speaks okay. to answer any Thank concerns you. that might come up. Thank okay. you. Andy, you want to come on up? Yes, How are you and guys just doing? state your name, the city you live in, and then I'll just swear you in. My name is Andy Singh. I live in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Okay. Do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth? To help you, God. Go right ahead, Andy. Thank you. So 15th and best, um, there's no grocery store nearby. There's nothing until you go to Safeway, you know, around there. And uh, it was the same situation at Atlas and Celtis. There's no grocery store over there either. Every day, um, if you go to any gas station or convenience store in town, no, no store has like baskets, nowhere has shopping carts. We, we have like small shopping carts in our stores. We have baskets. Every day um, at Atlas and Celtis, I'm, at least 30 people use baskets. At least a couple dozen people use the carts. And uh, we, we, I just feel like 15th and best, it's like a food desert. Um, if you go into the Nom Nom, everything's overpriced. Um, I, I don't think that's a joke. Uh, I'm being serious. Um, and then our store on Atlas and Celtis, all our frozen food items, all our grocery items, all our dairy items, we, a typical convenience store probably runs like 40, 50% on those margins. We, we cut it down to 15. We, a gallon of milk is under $4. Um, we have a good selection of like frozen foods. We, we wanna serve the area. We know there's residential around it. That's why we're building this. You know, people have a need. Um, I think how many, I don't know how many letters, you send out 500, right, to the community? Or within a mile, everyone gets one? 300-foot uh, notification. 300? So out of 300, I mean, if there's 10, 15 people here that have complaints, I think we're willing to work with the people here, too. Um, I'll, I'll bring my business card to a city council meeting, wherever I need to. I didn't bring them today. My email will be on there. Any complaints people have, any recommendations, we're, we're gonna go the extra mile. We, I live in Coeur d'Alene, I don't live in Spokane, I don't live in California. I grew up here, went to Woodland Middle School. You know, the teachers, I still know them. We're, we've been here 25 years. We want what's best for the community. I just know in that area, there's nothing. If everyone, if people want to pay six, seven bucks for a gallon of milk, they want to pay double the price on beer, like they only have that one option there. I think if we build something there, I don't think that Nom Nom is going to be in business much longer. <clears throat> you know, and we're local. Um, we, we need the support. We need the local people's support. And we, we got it on Atlas and Celtis. We plan on doing same philosophy 15th and best we're not gonna we're not gonna have big signs we're gonna do things the right way so that's it i've got a question again going back to the number of pumping stations yes, we've sir. seen our diagram here for those two double pumping stations uh, yeah we don't if we don't want to put 20 there or 10 there we we can afford to do it but that's not what the neighborhood needs Mm -hmm. There's already a store across the street right now. We, they have two. Um, we plan on putting four. Okay. We, we don't, there's not a need for six or eight there. So everything is based on what the area needs. And then regarding what you said, the lights would be off at a certain time. I forget that. Yeah. How does that work? So the gas isn't, be, isn't going to be... So no one, no one else, if anyone, if Maverick wanted to do this or anybody else, they're not going to offer any of this stuff. To you guys, you know, we're local, we understand people aren't going to be happy with a, anything going there, you know, but uh, we, we just turn, we'll turn off the lights at 11 o'clock. We, we don't open our stores past 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. No, nothing good. Nothing so what good. are the hours, approximately? We'll probably from? open 6 to 11. 6 to 11, and that, okay. All the lights turned off when we're closed. 
Um, it's not a high crime area, so we're not worried about mm -hmm. anything, you know, bad happening at night. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's easy. Just flip the lights off. Right. Okay. I just was curious yeah. about the lights. Other questions at this? Um, wait, did you want to speak a little bit to the plan for the lease space, the quick serve? Um, we had a, As a, a separate building. A friend of mine, they own uh, Union Roasters, like the coffee place. And uh, he inquired about it. They want to do like a coffee shop there with like, they want to sell donuts and pastries as well. Um, we want to partner with somebody local. We're not going to put a subway there. We're not going to put a, you know, something unnecessary. You know, there's no coffee shop. There's nowhere to sit down there. Just, we want to partner with somebody local. Thank you. All right. We appreciate it. If uh, we need to, I'll have you back later. Okay, thank Thanks, you. Andy. Okay, um, I'm going to go off our list. The first person is John Thomaset and <clears throat> is opposed but did not indicate whether you want to speak. Come on, you're standing up. I guess you want to speak. Same thank thing, you very just much. Good name evening. The city you live in, and I'll swear you in. I will. John Tomasi, Coeur d'Alene. Uh, do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Go right ahead. You have and Happy New Year to you folks also. Thank, thank you. Um, and some of the things that I was, I was only going to cover three or four points, and some have been covered. I was going to cover the, the building there and the height of it specifically, and that's been answered. That's not going to be the building. I am a little concerned, or I wonder why maybe we didn't have a rendition of what the building would look like. Um, I think this is a little contemporary. It's a nice-looking building, but a little contemporary or modern for what's around it on that section. Um, I live in Best Hill Meadows. Um, I know these, you sent out 300 notices. Uh, unless mine got lost in the mail, I don't think we got any. And we are just east and north of this location, maybe a tenth of a mile, two tenths of a mile. So we're a, a 106 home neighborhood that that really is would be impacted by that. So anyway, um, Mr. so anyway, Chair I was Mr. concerned Chairman. with the height and I was concerned with Mr. the architecture. Chairman, just, just, sorry. To, just to clarify, the notices went out to residences within 300 feet of that property, not 300 notices. Oh, I thought it was 300 notices I heard. 300 feet? Okay, that doesn't take, that takes into account maybe the block behind it and across the street. I mean, that, you know, that, that's like shooting a water gun and saying those people have been notified. I'm sorry, but. Yeah, that's, that's state law. Okay. Uh, the second thing that concerns me, um, and again, that you've touched on it, and I appreciate that. The C-17 is an is a all-encompassing change, and um, as, as your own staff um, uh, person, Mike, has said, you know, that, that leaves it wide open for things in the future. And I know you covered some of them, but some of them are automobile repair and cleaning, automotive fleet storage, automotive parking, commercial film production, commercial kennel, hotel motel, juvenile offenders facility, mini storage facilities, and mobile home court, I'm sorry, mobile food court. And some of those are not, would not be desirable in the neighborhood. Now, if you then have authority to, to not allow that at some point in the future, that's great. But it, but it does open that up at this point if you allow that change. My last point, and hopefully the most important one, was um, I went over the 2022-2042 the comprehensive plan or as much as that I could find, and thank you for everything you put online. That was very helpful. But it really appeared that when this plan, and it, as I understand it took two years, when it was developed, not only was the planning, you folks involved in the city council, but it seemed like a very broad base of, of community and, and government facilities who developed this plan. And in the development of the plan, they saw fit to leave that at, at NC, what is it, NC 17? Did I get that right? Just NC. What it is neighborhood now. commercial, but it didn't. The just to clarify, the comprehensive plan didn't change the zoning. That's right. Correct. They saw fit to leave that in doing all that two-year planning. No, the comprehensive plan doesn't ever change zoning. The comprehensive plan sets the future vision for the community. So they don't change any of the plan. No. Okay. No. 
Well, my, but my point is, and, and maybe my last point is, and um, I'm going to quote this because it was from a comment that was already mailed in, but I couldn't have said it any better, from one of the residents of, um, of Best Hill Meadows, a Ross Morton. And, and if he's here, I apologize for, for this. He said, if we consider what is the greatest need, much needed residential land to help address the affordability crisis or another gas station and convenience store directly across the street from an existing gas station, it's clear to see the former is the most reasonable path forward. And, and I tend to agree with that. What we tend to need now, I think, personally, in Coeur d'Alene is, is additional housing, maybe affordable housing, and that might be a better use for that property. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next, I have uh, Steve Lisman. Did not indicate what. Okay. Steve Lisman, 2511 North 16th Street, Coeur d'Alene. Do, do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth? To help yes, you sir. Go right ahead, Steve. Thank you. Well, I came here and I what didn't want that property annexed into the city and it was annexed into uh, neighborhood commercial okay if you put that map up where that is my house backs right up to that lot i didn't come in and contest the building that was building of the apartments that are south of me my house is the one down in the lower corner next to those two <clears throat> big gray battleships I have absolutely no privacy in my backyard now. Their lights, their security lighting makes my backyard look like a Walmart parking lot. I have people calling the city complaining about my chickens. I have people fo throwing food over the fence to my chickens. And now you want to change that into a gas station and all that? No, no, absolutely not. Those apartments block my winter sun in the morning. I don't get winter sun on the south side of my house because of those apartments. Now if you build two-story buildings out there, there goes my sunsets. I've lived in that house for 34 years. I've lived there since there was no stoplight at 15th and Best. Best ended at 16th Street and we had a stop sign to get across. Now I'm not against progress and growth, but what you, these guys want to put in here, I don't care how much fresh produce you have. I'm a mile away from freaking Costco. And there's three Safeways now. The old Safeway on 4th Street, the original, and then the one up at Ironwood, where the state construction yard used to be. You know, I am really stressed out, man. I thought I'd be living here. I'm 68 years old. I can't afford to move now. And you guys are just going to ruin my lifestyle you know i thought maybe when they built those apartments the deer wouldn't be hitting my wife's flowers as much but no they're worse now so i just wish you guys would put duplexes three plexes or four plex single story buildings residential you could put a little street in there call it 15th place or something like you have 10th place and build some housing in there I know I'm not one of your constituents. I live in the city. I haven't voted for you guys. I mean, I live in the county. If you look on that map, that's all county. And I'm being surrounded by the city. And my quality of life is going downhill. Thank you for your time. I hope I made a difference. Thank you. The next person. Here, uh, if I just point out, we are not elected. Okay. We're uh, we're appointed by the city council. Well, that's it, it's a difference. Thank you. Uh, the next person is Kathy. Okay, help me out. Thank you. Sorry. It's okay. Um, Kathy is named. My name is Kathy Maylene, and I li I'm a Coeur d'Alene resident. Uh, do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth? To help you guy. I do. Go ahead, Kathy. Um, my concern about this property is any kind of a change in a community like this, which is well established and is pretty much heavily concentrated already with residential, 
homes is any decision should be to support that community and what that community wants. And I don't see that need being met at all here. I mean, there's been an ongoing need, which has been voiced you know, throughout the whole um, county, that basically there is a need for more residential affordable housing to accommodate the needs and the financial needs of our community that wants to continue to live here. Many I know have left because it's become in unaffordable. So I think what's most important is to look at what is the best use of this property that supports what this community wants and what we represent. And I don't see a need from the perspective that you have a establishment kitty corner to the proposed property that supports a need, which at some point in time was established where, you know, it was wanted to have a gas station and or convenience mart, which I go there every day. I'm a confirmed diet Cokeaholic. I go there every day for my fountain drink without exception, um, except when the the fountain machine is out of order. So I, I'm in there every day. There aren't huge lines where people are waiting and waiting because their needs can't be met to get their gas, get whatever items they're coming in for, which is mainly a community that comes in in the morning, they're getting their coffee, they're getting their soda, they're getting their energy drinks, they're grabbing a donut, whatever it may, need, may be on the way to work, to go off the hunting, wherever it, wherever it is. So I don't see that we're not already meeting the need by what we already have, whether that facility continues to be nom nom or somebody else who maybe occupies that premise at another point in time. The traffic, as we all know, going down 15th, as many residents have chosen to go down 15th versus going up on 95 because of the added traffic and the stoplights up there has increased the traffic. I drive that way pretty much every day as well. And not only is the volume of cars down there increased, the amount of speeding violators and people blowing through stop signs has really gotten out of control. And if we are to add more services that are going to increase volume and as a good business owner they would be promoting their business which would encourage more growth and more traffic in that area i think that's also another detriment detriment and reason not to do that i like john live at the very end of at the east end of best avenue my other concern is also the access into and out of whatever would go in there if this were to be approved, which I am opposed to it, is that nature of the beast, if people go to make a right out of that parking lot on to 15th and they see there's traffic backed up, they're gonna go shoot out the other way on to best, just nature of the beast, they're gonna try and cut around traffic. And you've got an inflow and exflow of, of community residents that live there coming in and out. And I think not only just the traffic going in and out, but then the potential for any accidents as people try and flip in or out of that uh, location, trying to beat any traffic on 15th is also gonna be an issue. But I think the most important part is I don't see a community need being met. They're trying to establish a need that we may, we may want, but I have never heard in the years that I've lived in that residential area where anybody is complaining that they don't have access to services they need. And I agree, even though the markup may be a 15% markup, which may be less than, say, what a competitor across the street Nom Nom may offer, it's still a lot more expensive than if you were to go into like a Costco, a Safeway, a Fred Meyer, or whatnot. So I would just appreciate your your input and your consideration in this saying, are we meeting a community need or are we just meeting a need of someone who wants to grow a business there? Kathy, Thank I got you. a quick question for you. I yeah. usually don't ask questions of, um, of people who speak, but if um, concern of traffic uh, and with C-17, you know, someone can go in there and build something with, you know, a lot more height and maybe commercial on the bottom and some apartments on top. I mean, how do you feel about what someone can do on, on the right with that building with addressing traffic? Because no, I, mean, I think, I it's think a, aren't you going to have the same, or I don't know what your thought process is, but the amount of traffic is going to be... Well, it sounds like be, with C-17th, because one, you don't have the height restrictions. You've got the detriment to those folks, like the gentleman who just spoke who live there, where basically it's really impeding upon their privacy to have a large structure basically obscuring their view their mm -hmm. sunsets their sun whatever the situation may be and it's starting to look more city-like than basically something that's in a community where you've got a nice residential area 
established community where we haven't had to deal with and don't want to deal with, basically. Um, well, I'm so talking about, uh, you know, right now you can, in the zone that it is, it can go up to 32 feet mm -hmm. of height. All and right. that, and that's with um, residential on the ground. Uh, it says here, according to us, we have residential above ground floor commercial. Mm -hmm. So the potential of having traffic is still going to be the same, perhaps, in an N N uh, NC that it is right now. If it goes to C-17, possibility of perhaps going a, a little higher is there as well. So I think traffic is going to be on this property no matter what is developed. And I'm not sure if this particular proposal and I didn't ask Chris this question, is less than when it's residential or not. But traffic is going to be in this particular But it sounds thing. like, and I could be wrong, like if you had the combination of kind of a, a residential, non-residential as it's zoned for today, some of your, your traffic is somewhat fixed by the residential component of what may go in there versus especially when you're going in for any kind of a gas station convenience store, they tend to be high traffic no matter what. I mean, that's just, that's what they're about. And it's people going in and out and they survive on volume. But you can have commercial on this piece of property, the way it's zoned right now on the lower, lower first floor the and moon? then residential above it. So you're still gonna, and I'm not arguing your, your no, fact. No, I totally I'm understand. just trying to point out so everyone understands what can be put on there Right. as it sits right now, compared to what is perhaps proposed in a C-17. And we all have concerns that once it goes C-17, it can be some other Correct, it can be modified. Right? And that's right. why I, I asked the question, can we ask city council, or when we make our recommendation, what can we put on there to kind of keep it within what we see here today? So that's kind of where, what our thought process is here. So I just want to make sure everyone understands that. Because, yeah, we'll hear a lot about traffic, I'm sure, but there's going to be traffic no the, matter what. You're going to put new volume there no matter well, what I just, you put I, there. Yeah, I didn't want to get into a discussion. That's right. why I said I usually don't ask questions. I just right. wanted to put that out so hopefully everyone understands. Yep, and I totally agree because whatever okay. you put there is going to add volume just by virtue okay. of you're putting more um, structures more there, density. they're going to have oh. more cars in there, but that is what you put there also that I think makes okay. the biggest difference. Just just All for right. everybody's information, by right, just the way it is now NC, we can have commercial and professional offices, we can have daycare, medical and dental practices, parks, personal services, hairdresser, whatever, uh, and residential, above ground floor only, new construction and retail by a special use, we can also have re religious institutions and schools. So that is by right just the way it is as an NC right now. Understand. And so those all drive traffic. They just do. Right. So. And many on the list, though, I would argue that are, you know, say if you put a hair salon there, they're scheduled appointments. I mean, you have a certain amount of kind of controllable volume that go through there. When you're pushing for like a convenience gas station type setting, they survive on volume. Right. One and salon will not fill that. That that no. would have to be a hair school. <laughs> Maybe in a spot. But, um, but just to understand that, you know, this Mr. Singh has what he is specialized in. But that piece of land, as it stands now, is NC. So it has, it drives, it drives traffic. It right. just will. And, it drives it, and it's a prime piece of land. So. But again, I think it comes back to what does the community want and need. And I don't feel as proposed it's meeting the needs. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Kathy. Great, thank you. Uh, Joe Archie Salt. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, Joe. Archambault. Archambault. Good French Canadian. Archambault. Archambault, right. You're actually. I live in Best Hills Meadows. Okay, Joe. Okay, with everybody else. Right, I'm the president your, of Best your, Hills Meadows. You name it. Your Joe Archambo. Okay, thanks, Joe. Your name and, and the city you live in, thank you. Do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Go right ahead, Joe. All right, I agree. Everything that John and Kathy said, they live in the development. I'm the president at Best Hills Meadows Homeowners Association. I know it goes out to, what, 300 to the closest people you sent it out. We had no idea. How did I find out? 
and somebody actually on Facebook pasted it. Kathy's point was well taken, and it's the traffic. You can argue traffic from anything. Whatever you put there, you're going to have an extra car, even if you just put one parking spot. I suggest you leave it as NC because, yes, you can put all those things that you said put in there, but they're never going to be like having a gas station there. Never. Then you're going to put an electric charge station in there, too. You got Nom Nom. I don't care how cheap his prices are. You're still going to add traffic. The fellow that spoke about traffic in 15th Street improving, that's way down the road, way down the road. They're improving part of it, but to get from, what do you say, Harrison past 90 up to uh, Best, that's a big ordeal. There's underground water, they claim, that is a... Uh, I don't know, an hindrance when they want to do the work on 15. Best I could figure, because I went to the meeting on the improvement of 90, what they want to do, and what they want to do on 15, besides they have traffic lights to there by 90. They said it will be years before they make that. So we'll have to live with 15th Street as it is now if he gets his gas station in there or whatever he wants to put in there. You don't need a gas station there. That road is dangerous as it is. They didn't pave it. They just threw down uh, asphalt on 15th because it was like riding the Basara Highway. It was all, and the reason they didn't pave it permanently, because they can't yet. They have to come up with, I was told, this is going back about two years ago, over $2 million just to be able to research to repave that road. And if you add something there, there's plenty of places. You can, down the road on Best, there's another convenience store if you need stuff. There's no need for this. I know they can put a lot of stuff, like you said, you know, hairdresser in there. Well, that's good. That's one car in, and maybe the hairdresser or whatever, or whatever, you know, a, a, a daycare center. But it's the constant traffic flow that you're going to get out of that place. That's the, where the problem is. And again, what are they going to do? Who said they're going to change the lights? on uh, 15th at the corner there. I was told, uh, I don't know who controls that, I guess it's the road department or something like that with the traffic loads. They have to put more, a uh, uh, better system in now because it's in insufficient. And now they want, if he adds his gas station, the traffic is just too bad. Just all I say is don't vote, vote on, leave it where it is. And then if he wants to put a hairdressing shop up, he's welcome to. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Carol G. Wolf. She did not wish to speak, did not indicate whether she's, I take it, she's opposed. Uh, Kathy. Dion, another French name. Dion? Did not wish to speak. <laughs> You want to come up or you don't want to speak? Okay, thank you. Uh, Bob Newkirk, and you do wish to speak, Bob? Okay, Bob, you know the drill, name and city. Good evening, Bob Newkirk. Uh, my family and uh, I uh, live, let we me live just in Best swear, Hill Meadows. Uh, uh, excuse me, let me just swear you in, please. Do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? So help me God. Go right ahead. Bob Newkirk, uh, my family and I live in Best Hill Meadows. We're the corner of Best and White Pines. Um, we don't oppose development to this corner. What we oppose is having a service station there. There's really no need. We've got Nom Nom. We've got within a quarter mile, you can go to Costco for gas. You can go to Safeway, Exxon, Mobile. There's gas stations all over the place. Um, one of the slides was saying, you know, for the health and safety and welfare of the community, I don't see how it really adds any of those things to us. Um, it's not like we're gonna go down there as neighbors and meet at the convenience store. Uh, it'd be great if they put a you know a restaurant in or something like that. But uh, you know, all I see it's gonna add is traffic. Eighteen wheelers dropping off fuel. Uh, I noticed the nice picture of the building didn't zoom out and show the. the gas pumps and the canopy and the lights. It's going to add noise pollution. It's going to add uh, smell pollution. Uh, it's, just, it's just going to add traffic. I just don't see how it adds to the community. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 
I have uh, Jim Myers did not indicate. Oh, okay. Jim Myers, Coeur d'Alene. Okay. Uh, do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Self I do. God. Go right ahead. Okay. I'm retired twice. <laughs> For part of my PT, my physical training, I walk the neighborhood on a daily basis almost. I'm watching the traffic going in and out of Nam Nam. Fuel tankers, 18-wheelers that are delivering food, step vans, you name it, at all hours of the day. All we're going to do is multiply that if we put another facility on that corner. Also, whatever goes in there, yes, traffic will go up. The only reason that traffic won't go up if something goes in there, if it's a sheriff substation. We don't need additional heavy vehicles in and out of there. And especially if there's only going to be two exits on to 15th. Trying to get an 18-wheeler or a fuel tanker to do a U-turn to get back out on 15th in that lot is going to be really difficult. At least at Nom Nom, he can come in off of 15th and go out on best or vice versa. That can, is going to be a problem. Also, they had the nice picture of the facility they built. He said the square footage. There was no discussion of the square footage that this facility might bring. The gentleman said oh, the, the nice things he wants to put in there, but that's all going to depend on the square footage involved. So if we don't know how big or how small the facility is, how do we know what things can be brought forward as part of the program? Thank you. That's all I have to say. You're welcome. Thank you. Deb, uh, I have Debbie, Debbie and Mark Smith, and I guess Debbie wants to speak. Okay. Uh, name and city in Australia and Debbie. Debbie Smith, Coeur d'Alene. I work in the work. I live in Best Meadows. Okay. Do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but truth, self you got? I do. Go ahead, Debbie. Thank you. Um, of course, I agree with everything everybody's brought up, so I won't repeat it. My concern is Best Meadows is um, there's no outlet. That's the end. You've got over, I think, 100 homes back in there. In the event of an emergency, a fire, evacuation, we all got to egress one way, and that's out to 15th. So my really big concern is any more added um, um, you know, traffic and stuff will just make it just a, a mess trying to get out there if we need to be evacuated. If we're told we need to be evacuated, we're, we're stuck back there. So that was my, you know, my main concern. Okay, thank you. Uh, William Irving did not indicate anything. Okay. Chris Booth just opposed, but did oh, oh, come on. Name and city. Chris Booth, Coeur d'Alene. Do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth, self you got? I do, sir. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you. I bought my house on Bora Avenue 22, 23 years ago. One of the main reasons that I chose that area is because there wasn't a lot of things like this there. It was residential. It was calm for the most part. Now, if we're just going to keep building, I understand building. You know, you got you to spread, you got to progress. But most of the stuff I wanted to say has already been said. We don't need a gas station. We already have one. We have the best food shop down the way. We have the corner on 4th, has a gas station and food options. It's just unnecessary, in my opinion. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thayer, uh, Thayer and Patricia Hornby, and somebody wants to speak. I'm not quite, okay. Thayer Hornby, Coeur d'Alene. Uh, do you solemnly swear and or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you? Yeah, it is. It's Go right ahead. Thank yeah. you. So we've lived in Best Hills Meadows now for 25 years. And uh, when we first moved to that community, the area where the, um, uh, at the north, what would that be, the northeast corner where there's now the senior community, uh, that was all forest. 
and they cut that down and it sat vacant for a number of years before they finally put something in there. And even that area, it, we've seen a decline uh, just we have no control over that. We've seen a decline over where the nom nom is. And this area, it, we need more housing. We don't need another gas station. Uh, I just spent three months this year down in Houston, Texas, where they have no zoning. And I know that this is nothing like that. But just to see the decline of some of the areas where nice communities, homes were built into the forest, and then all of a sudden, it's all strip malls around it. And butting up next to it. And I worry about that kind of thing. I worry about the fact that anything can happen uh, once the zoning gets changed, that it opens it up for a variety of things. I don't know that you're going to be able to put those kind of conditions to stop that um, to, and to limit the use only as a gas station. But I just want to go on record as being opposed. We need housing. We don't need another gas station. In the 25 years I've lived there, I've never once found myself saying, gee, I wish I had another gas station closer to my house or a restaurant or a fast food place closer to my house that I could go to. So that's it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Mark Calton, and he's opposed but did not indicate. Okay, come on up. You're allowed to talk. <laughs> Name the city, Mark. Uh, it's uh, Mark Carlton. I live in Best Hill Metals also. Okay. Um, do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? Yes. Nothing but the truth. Stop you guys. Go right ahead. Uh, I, um, uh, I see no need for this uh, development in the neighborhood. Uh, you talked about a food desert. We're five minutes from Costco. The gas stations are, are close by Costco. There's, there's plenty of gas stations. There's plenty of grocery stores. I, I do not see how, how this development is going to add anything to the neighborhood. And none of the neighbors that, I, that I've talked to have ever expressed any desire for this sort of development. And I don't think any of us want it. That's all i got to say. Okay. Thank you. I have a Tom Hunger Grove Bond. I'm sorry, Tom, if I misspelled your or mispronounced. Hungerford. Hung okay. Did not wish to speak. Kim Seeley is opposed and did not. Okay, come on. She wrote a letter. <clears throat> oh, it's nice. Look at the wheels. Name and city, and I'll swear in. Uh, Kim Seeley, Coeur d'Alene. Uh, do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony <clears throat> you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Go right ahead. Um, so just like everybody else said, I agree 100%. I'm going to speak for the families, the young, young kids that live in the area, that we walk the area, we have dogs. Um, I live on Randall, two houses in from 15th. Um, we're already a cut through when people don't want to stop at the light. They cut through our street to get back onto Best. So it's busy. The cars come flying through. So if we have a gas station, or I know any business there, that is just going to pick up. My kids, she's, we're always playing in our front yard. He's in a wheelchair. You know, something's going to happen someday. Hopefully, you know, I shouldn't say it like that. <laughs> um, but I just don't want all my family pictures to have a gas station in in our, you know, in the back of these guys growing up. Uh, residential housing, that's fine. You know, it's, uh, we'll take that, but I don't need gas pumps out my front window. And that's all I have to say. Okay, you will. Thank you. Wow, that's a tricky one. Um, Even I can't read that one. <laughs> Samora, Jerry. Jerry Sam He was at 2519 and 2515. On 15th. 15th Street. Crossed oh, off. What? No. Oh, that, that's her. Oh. Okay. Okay. Shaky hand. Sorry. This, that's okay. You got my red pen. <laughs> uh, to state your name and the city you live in, and I'll swear you in. My name is Jerry Schoenhardt. Okay, do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? Nothing but the truth, help you God. Go right ahead, thank you. 
Well, I, my, my main objective is, I guess I've lived here longer than a good share of the people that are here. I've lived in that house. I've had the house on the corner for over 60 years mm. and have lived there. It's been, a, it's been pretty peaceful. I must admit there's lots of traffic that is sort of objectionable, but I can't see that a gas station is going to do anything but make it a little bit worse. Plus, plus all the things that go along with it, all the extra lights, all the extra everything that's going on there with the gas station. And we have one across the street. I realize that competition is good, but this is a pretty residential place, and I don't think we need two gas stations for that. And, and I'm, so I'm pretty much against that. And like I say, I've, I've been here for over 60 years, and there was, I didn't even live in the city limits when I, when I bought that house. Court Lane certainly has changed. <laughs> so thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Doris Borg Bor. is opposed but did not wish to speak. No, nope. okay. John West is opposed, did not wish to speak. James West opposed. You want to come up? Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Go right ahead, Sam. You know, I've got a lot of concerns, but most of my neighbors here have uh, shared them. I echo those. I, I, um, I'd repeat them if I thought it was helpful. I'd, if we zoomed out on this, I, th I'd, I think the council uh, might also like to understand that everybody that's talked today only has one way in and out. I know we heard we do talk about an emergency but I'm just talking about daily commutes. Everybody that comes in here, um, now we've got a, a drawing facing uh, that's oriented north-south. So you can see Best Avenue going east and west across the subject property. Every house in that direction has to egress and ingress at that intersection. That would be a real impact. Um, I also thought I heard some disingenuousness from the presentation here. We talked about no impact on traffic and then we talked about mm -hmm that there was gonna be a big plan to uh, enhance 15th and add traffic lights. So which is it? Do, are we gonna have more traffic and we need more traffic lights or is this not gonna affect traffic? I, I didn't feel like that was real sincere. So uh, as a homeowner in that neighborhood with family there and uh, my folks live in there, all my friends and neighbors here have spoken, I think eloquently about our concerns for the traffic uh, um, as well as the, the type of people that might come to this type of, uh, of event. We, we have Nom Nom across the street. They sell food and sundry. The only items that were mentioned by the presenters here were, uh, I think, milk and donuts. We've got that at Nom Nom for sure. There was no other exotic things. And then we got a bunch of um, equivocation about what would be in the annex building. It won't be Subway, but it might be something else. I don't think we have near enough certainty here to change existing zoning and um, so I rise in opposition to this change. I also am concerned that I heard a council member mention that she has family who live across the street. I'd point out that 300 feet from the perimeter of this property is probably just about 10 people, but you've got twice that in here in opposition who heard about it some other way. And they certainly didn't reach out to the neighbors it would affect the most. That would be the people in Best Hill Meadows and down the street. So I, I think they've failed in their application just in that way that they haven't communicated with the applicable the people who would be affected the most the community that lives back in the neighborhood i just Thank want you. to clarify one thing i don't think any uh, of no. the commission my son here... lives across from the one on Siltis and atlas it has nothing... my son lives across 
from the Celtis and Atlas. Okay, and, and he enjoys it. Has nothing to do with this. Okay, I heard different. Absolutely no nothing. He likes it there. Thank All you. Right. Thank he you. likes it. It helps him. He can. Uh, get Joanne some food. Joanne Gove is opposed. Do not wish to speak. No. Okay. Call Gove opposed and does wish to speak. Okay. Carl Gove, Coeur d'Alene. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear and or affirm that testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you God? Yes, I do. Go oh, right ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I, my wife and I were not informed on this. Um, like John said, you didn't fire very far. Um, that's one thing. But um, Well, let me uh, address that again. And, and I think Hillary or, or legal can, we did what, code says we send out notices within 300 feet of the property that is being addressed here tonight feet. so i mean as far as I, 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 let me finish as far as you know someone come up and say hey i didn't know about this or i didn't get a notice the city did what legal i'm glad everyone's here i think this is great but as far as the 300 feet that's what we have to do. So I'm sorry, but and go Mr. right ahead. Mr. Chairman, if I may, before he begins. So we also post the site, yeah, the and we publish in the newspaper. Okay, Thanks. great. Yeah, it's posted. And there's a sign, right, it's posted on the property. On big yellow one, okay. usually. It's yellow or orange. All right. Um, yeah. Sorry about that, but go right ahead. That sign's two by uh, two. In well, the middle all right, I can't. Uh, all right. Gotcha. So if, if you go to up and down 15th, the east side of 15th, as far as I know, <clears throat> almost down to uh, Celtics or Sherman. There's a taco stand at Sherman and a gas station. But as you go up on the east side of 15th, it's all residential, up through our area, all the way up to the middle school, you know, at uh, Dalton. So, I mean, it's, it's completely residential, and you're going to change that now by putting this commercial site in there. I just don't think that's desirable. Keep it residential. I mean, you go, you go on the west side of 15th, and you've got Nom Nom, and then as you go down best, you begin to see commercial, and then you get the Apple Way, which is nothing but commercial. So I mean, you got plenty of commercial. So when I moved here um, from that place down south a few years back, I considered myself an Idahoan now. I've been here long enough. Uh, we had acreage, and I'm... I'm not getting any younger. My wife decided we should downsize. And we moved to uh, Best Hill Meadows. It's, I mean, it's wonderful to live in Best Hill Meadows. You know, if you go, as, again, as you go east on Best, there's no outlet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a great advantage to having a house in there. But, but, we, but our only exit, like everybody said, is to go out to Best and 15th. And the convenience store would only add, to, it could only add to the traffic. But one thing about when I moved, and I think everybody here will agree with me on this. People ask, well, what do you like about where you live now? And I tell them, I'm five minutes from everywhere. If I want to go downtown, I can go downtown. If I want to get on the freeway, I can get on the freeway. If I want to get on 95, quick to get the 95. If I want to go to the gym, it's quick to get to the gym. And especially if I want to go to Costco, I'm three minutes away. So I mean, I'm five minutes from everywhere. And I don't need another convenience store. I never use Nom Nom to begin with. And, I, and I'm sure that most of these people here would hardly ever use that. It's not going to be an improvement for us. It's only going to take away from what we have now. I would hope that we would keep it residential, just like the rest of the east side of 15th. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Michael Monto did not indicate anything. Okay. The last person I have on the list is Timothy Ellis Sor Sorin, and is opposed and did not indicate whether you want to speak or not. Okay. Hold on. That's everyone that I have signed up. If someone's changed their mind and wants to speak, come on up. Come on up. Come. I think I know this lady.
My name is Carol DeWolf, and I live in Coeur d'Alene. And do you solemnly swear and or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth, to help you God? I do. And Carol, you did sign up. I saw your name. I did sign up, but I said no. But now Now? (laughs) I'd like to just express my opinion. I live alone. I live in Bastille Meadows. It's safe. I feel secure there. Um, I, my neighbors are good to me. There is one way in and one way out, but I don't have riffraff coming around. And I'm just concerned about that for my own safety, that what is going to happen when these people open this, if they, if you approve it, that we have this convenience store. We don't have, I don't have any problem with nom nom, nothing happened. But if this is right on our corner, getting into our street to get into our community. And so I just, I'm just concerned for public safety for us that live there, that um, the element that might come in. So that's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, As I go ahead, if you want to speak, if you didn't sign up, just sign up afterwards, please. Name and city? My name is Rob Knutson. I live in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Okay. Um, do you solemnly swear and or affirm that testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, right I ahead. do. Well, I want to testify to two facts. Uh, I live <clears throat> in Indian Meadows, which is pretty close to the other gas station on Atlas and Celtis. And uh, one of the facts is actually to the benefit of the pr- uh, proponent. Uh, when he says he will offer low prices, that's true. Um, but it's related to the second fact, which is that the kind of traffic that came to that gas station after uh, lowering the gas prices, great great for customer service. People came from, I think, more than just the surrounding radius to fill up their tanks. But it's created quite a traffic issue at Celtis and Atlas with the traffic circle, especially around rush hour beginning and end of the, the work day. So uh, I, I'm going to stay kind of neutral on this, but I am sympathetic to the nearby residents and just would propose that you don't underestimate the amount of traffic that can be generated by a, a gas station. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Rex, Andy, you want to come up and address any of the issues? Okay, go right ahead. So um, I'm going to speak to you guys, but I'm really speaking to everyone here. Um, So looks-wise, just a few points. Um, Looks-wise, somebody wanted, they don't don't want black, they don't want modern. We're thinking about doing something completely different. There's going to be a market there no matter what. There was somebody that spoke. And, uh, but we're going to make it you know, maybe brown tones, it's gonna fit into the community. There, there's gonna be a market there no matter what. The, the reason we wanna do fuel, the, the money we make on it, it helps us pay our labor more. If all the employees that work at our Atlas and Celti store, no one makes less than 18 bucks an hour. Um, we pay 18 to $22 an hour. So the extra income allows us to pay our employees better. We have better employees with that extra income. We don't have high turnover. Everyone that works at our Atlas and Cell T store has been there at almost at least a year. So we want to run business the right way. We're, I don't think anyone else is going to do a better job on this corner than us trying to satisfy the community's needs. Um, I'm open to um, if we have like a meeting at a hotel, little convention center, anybody that has any complaints. Please address the commission. Sorry, okay. If anyone has complaints, we're willing to listen to everybody there. Um, traffic, we're, we're probably, we're not gonna do what we did at Atlas. We're not gonna, or I don't know if we should or we shouldn't, but we're, we, if, if the community, if the people that care here don't want us to, then we won't. We're not going to run low prices just to get a bunch of people there. We'll be fair and competitive, but we don't need to do anything extra. Um, 
maybe we can help out the people that come to the community meeting that want to voice their concerns. We can all give them $100 gift cards. Maybe that money that we were going to lower our prices, we can help people out. Um, Our Atlas building is 8,500 square feet. That includes the top area. We're not gonna do a top or a upstairs here, so it'll cut down the square footage. We, we wanna build something that's gonna fit in and be seamless. You know, it's not gonna stand out too much. So that, that's all I have, thank you. Okay, I got a question for you real quick. Um, you said there's gonna be a market there no matter what, given the fact that if it stays in neighborhood commercial and uh, under that, and Hillary, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, it is yeah. retail and would retail be under the same, right. same thing as market? The convenience sales fits under okay. the retail. So regardless, as you just, I just wanna make clear I understood, there's gonna be a market there, but it wouldn't have gas, perhaps. It, it, and it I'm not have, saying that's what you're gonna do, but I just wanna make sure, that, is that what you said? Or it's either going to be, I'll be honest, it's, yes. either, it's going to be either a big market, it might even be bigger okay. if we can't do gas pumps, because um, okay. we've got to have extra income flowing in. Okay, but I if understand. we have a few gas pumps, that helps pay. Sure, I, under, I understand yeah. the business philosophy. I just wanted to make sure I understood that correctly. That's the only question I had. Go ahead, Mr. Peter. Sure. How we usually do these things, I see these people are leaving. <clears throat> we... Uh, uh, you give your testimony, then, then we close the testimony, and we have general discussion, yeah. and we come to do some decision. On some occasions, and I don't know if this is one, but it may be, when the applicant has great plans, the residents don't understand those plans, that's where the, uh, the, the conflict may come in. That may be where this is here. Maybe the residents don't fully understand what you're doing, and maybe the residents you don't fully understand what the residents' concerns are. There may be a way where you meet with them that's, that's what I'm, and, I and come to, to some yeah. more acceptable conclusion and then come, and it could be tonight or it could be, I, I, I don't want to infer that you hold it over, it's, but that, it's, there may be a way to do that if, if you're interested in that and if the residents are interested in that. It's our business. In We're in, like, we want to sell frozen foods, frozen TV dinners. There's a lot of apartments. There's a lot of residential there. So we want to serve that community, you know? And uh, like I said, we, I, I, I'm willing to, you know, we rent out something at the Best Western. Anybody that has complaints, we'll even go door to door and invite more people to come. Any complaints people have, we're gonna listen to those. Before this is approved or disapproved or after? Well, let me, let me try to put clarity on that. We have in front of us, we either it's uh, approve this zone change or don't approve the zone change. And Hillary, let me know. I'm reading from what we have here. Uh, postponing this because, as Peter is saying, the applicant has time to talk to the neighbors and whatever that outcome might be. How do we go about what we have in front of us tonight? Because all I see here is does or does not. So, but we're only making a recommendation. Yeah, I just want some clarity on whoever does findings. Right. So the options before you are to, yeah, the recommend adoption or for the city council to not adopt the zone change, you have the option to recommend conditions. And the commission always has the option if you needed to table a hearing, you could, but you'd have to have, the, nobody could deliberate, there couldn't be any ex parte communication, so the community can't talk to the commission, vice versa. You can't talk to the applicant. Um, you'd have to have a specific reason why you would table it. You would need more evidence or something like that. Right, and that would be in who's ever wants to make that type of motion. Correct. Tonight. If, can I and answer? ideally, you would schedule when the hearing would reconvene. So, okay. but again, you have to have good reason to, to table it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Hillary, I have a question. Um, he does show electric car charging. Does that fall under a retail? facilitation or a specialty facility? It's probably under essential service. It's kind of an unusual it's category. We'd well, have to kind of The look. millennials will want this, right? Trust me. And something? he's a millennial. Um, Can I add something real quick? But yeah, go ahead. So if we get this zone change today, um, before the city council meeting, I promise to hold like a town hall meeting and on, on design and stuff like that. We want to get the area's input. Well, let me clarify. If we um, 
give you enough, say you want to have this meeting again with the neighbors or whatever. Yeah. It won't go to city council. Yeah. It'll come back to us? Or how does that work, well, Hillary? My understanding of what he's saying is if you make your recommendation either way, he's, still, he's offering to meet with the neighbors before the next hearing with the city council, because city council will have a public hearing hmm. for the final determination on the zone change. I see, which is okay. Mr. Chair, I, I, no. <laughs> I'll step out a little bit. <clears throat> I don't want to presuppose what, what the group wants to do, but I'm of, of the opinion that there's some advantage to uh, uh, postpone this or hold it over and have the applicant meet with the neighbors in some fashion, have general discussion, see if there's some uh, mutual uh, 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 agreements that can be reached. I would suggest that only if the applicant is interested in doing that. I, you know. It, it, <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to postpone it like I think we have like we're doing everything according to the comprehensive plan that's all we're going off of well, I understand. And, then, and then we will after this before the city council meeting 100% best Western any of these hotels will ha will go book a conference center I'll go door to door personally and then people can come in and then that makes our case stronger when we go to city council like hey we went door to door you know and we did things the right way. We're not trying to build like a behemoth building here. It's going to be what's based on what's right across the street. Ours is going to be newer, better, you know, just what the times call for now. But, but what we do is we pass it one way or another. Yeah. And that goes like that to the council. There's not any contingency. There's not any thing where, well, we've... we've recommend you do this council based on this person doing something after this meeting that's not how it works correct we, we make a motion and that's what goes before the council the council addresses that you can come before the council the citizens come before the council so the council can accept so are it, we voting it. on today if it meets the comprehensive plan it's either nc or c17 that's it no no but we're, that's all we're voting on oh, today okay right. oh. Okay. Well, I don't know how we're going to vote. You just hear right, the discussion. Right. Let's let's yeah, let's, that's all we're let's voting on yeah. Um, it's not let's, that. let's try to get off that point. I think, I think uh, the answer is yeah, okay. that the rezone won't occur until council acts. I understand. I'm saying I want to. Like, we're here today because the comprehensive plan. There's a there's a zoning right across the street in the same area. We're trying to get the same zoning as across the street. If that's approved. We want to go the extra mile where no one else is willing to do this. We want to meet with the community. We want to hear, like, hey, you know, I think we spoke about it. Instead of the dumpster being area being somewhere near the houses, let's move it away so it's not, so people don't wake up. You know what I mean? We want to do the right things. And, and, and everyone, and you certainly have more time to speak. Uh, I understand, as much as you say you um, want to have another meeting, um, because We're gonna of do what that perhaps you heard tonight, We're gonna do uh, the, the, our discussion when it gets to the commission here to discuss this, we'll either say yes or no to the zone change, and whatever that might be. Um, and if you say you're going to have meetings after we make our decision, that's kind of after the point, because then it goes to city council based on our recommendations. Yeah. And whatever that meeting is, is great that you have a meeting, but whether or not you bring something different at that point in time, it isn't what we're looking at right now and what we've heard. So it, I don't know if you understand the total process, but once we say yes or no to this, it goes to city council. And then however you want to present it at that time, and the neighbors might do the same thing they did today, then city council is going to make their decision now if you have a meeting in between that that's great and tell the city council whatever the outcome of that meeting is that's great but the city's council is still going to make their decision based on what they hear at that point in time so what we're talking about tonight is exactly what you've heard here tonight and that's what we're going to discuss I'm sorry to interrupt but you have plenty go ahead continue I under understand I just want to do things the right way mm -hmm. we're not here to piss people off, you know? And if people have something to say, we're gonna listen to them. If people don't want tall buildings, we're gonna lower it, you know? If they don't want dumpsters near their houses, we're gonna move that away. If they don't want a bunch of fuel pumps, we're not gonna do that many. 
if they don't want lighting, we're going to turn them turn it off at 11. Right. I don't think anyone brings a stronger case than we do. Right. But we have to look at what yeah. C-17 allows to be done to what N NC, the neighborhood commercial, allows to be done. So that's that's what where we're okay. doing. And Phil, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Phil, you need to... Yeah, I just wanted to say something that... Now, this is the Planning and Zoning Commission. Yeah. We look at planning, we look at zoning. We're not here to negotiate your site plan. Site plan may be nice, it may be great. That's not our job. And my position is we should go ahead, have our discussion, make a motion, and it goes forward. Either right. approved or recommended for denial to the, to the city commission, and this gentleman can meet with the homeowners in that time if he wants to or not. It's his choice to make. Right. I got you. I understand. So continue if you have some, no, uh, some that's, that's more it. items Thank to address of what we heard. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Rex, you need to add anything? All right. Um, I was, um, it was, it was great to hear the passion uh, that came through on the part of the neighborhood. And so um, I, uh, especially the gentleman that hit me that, that about, about the sunsets and being there for 35 years. And so I, I did want to reiterate what Andy's saying is this isn't like a, like a, what would you say, quid pro quo or something like that, where he's trying to, this would be something where as a, as a way of trying to mitigate uh, the feedback that came through at city council, I can assure you that Andy is someone who does want to do it the right way, would want to, you know, kind of avoid this, you know, should that next round occur. Um, this, this, and so, and, and that can be something that, that we take up, but that's, that's one way of trying to uh, increase the neighborhood response and, and, uh, and, and create something that, that uh, you know, people can feel heard. And, and I think that's the important part uh, that we, we learned here tonight. But I think as it relates to, um, you know, the comprehensive plan, um, that was another element where, you know, Andy did try to take a proactive approach of trying to align, you know, with a, a, a document that was produced by the city where, where we are trying to convert to something that is in alignment with, uh, with the future use. And, you know, I think that there is, there's a bit of a misconception, and I think that the, the, uh, the commission has, has hit on it, is that, you know, Andy wants to do something that is that a single-story building should, um, something that was allowed in the NC, you know, and, and I think, uh, Commissioner Fleming, I think you alluded to it, is, is we could see a building that's 32 feet tall. Um, retail on the ground floor, that could be a steady stream of, of, of traffic, and then residents and parking um, would, would also create a, a traffic situation. I did also want to um, address a misconception, you know, for the audience here with the unlimited height. Um, that is that as as an architect we we hear the unlimited height that's talked about but a lot of times that is limited by uh, fire restriction and so what what you have with regard to fire flow and construction type and so you know it, it isn't a total blank check <laughs> as someone that has tried to push that boundary a couple times and and so we Andy is trying to come in and do something that is um, that is single story um, are there any other questions that I could address at this time otherwise I think I think we're good Nope. Rex, I've got one for you. Was there any consideration into just because of the broad nature of a C-17 and all the things that could fall into that, was there any uh, consideration on your part of asking instead for an exception to the neighborhood commercial zone to allow for it, gas station and food? Yes, it, it was, and that's a great question. We, we did consider another zone but that would have required a special use which have been which would have been two approvals <laughs> and so it would have been um something we would have had to jump through that that hoop twice our goal was what really was to align with that comprehensive plan document and something that was um uh was an intentional as a way of trying to uh fit along the lines of what the city's vision for that lot was okay. thank you okay, okay. No other questions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to close public testimony on this and bring it to further discussion with the commissioners. Okay. We have some discussion. Yeah, Phil, I know you have to go. Well, let me you? make a okay. couple of comments if I could. Sure. Uh, you know, it's always important that we listen to the homeowners and hopefully they understand our concerns and we understand theirs. Planning Commission is here. Planning and zoning is to look at, first of all, the zoning. 
when you look at this property, 15th Street does not have any commercial zoning other than NC on the east side. It's very important, too, that, that BEST terminates going, uh, going east. So if there could be some traffic problems there. All that, no, all that aside, traffic is an issue for anything, but it's not always the number of cars. It's the traffic movements, the time of day that they're out there blocking the street or causing, causing delays to people. Gas station is a particularly all-day type of event and can cause uh, traffic confusion to people. Maybe people that like just made it a older. Um, it was really interesting to me that the first person to speak here today was a gentleman I don't know, had nothing to do with this application. He was concerned about bikes and walkability. And if you read the comprehensive plan on this property, it talks about no, uh, talk about mixed use, low places, which on, goes on to say, to say should be highly walkable. Putting a gas station at this corner, I think, deters uh, from that highly walkable situation. It's also interesting, the NC district, I mean, it's a commercial mixed use type of district. But in there, it doesn't just not allow gas stations. It specifically prohibits them. Now, I don't know why that was done that way at this location, but just in looking at the what is developed there, the, the zoning that's in place, and the uses that are in place, I just feel that commercial zoning on this side of a C-17 type commercial zoning is inappropriate to cross uh, 15th Street. Every application we've had along 15th Street in the past year, year and a half, has been mixed uh, uh, single family, plan unit development type of development from 90 coming all the way up to its best. Uh, my feeling is at this point, we should not be breaking that pattern to allow for, at least not to allow for gas station. Thank you, Phil, I appreciate that. Thank you, I, uh, I'm sorry, uh, one, uh, applauding is great, but if we can hold that back a little bit, and I, sorry, Andy, I closed public testimony at this, and it's, it's it, I'm sorry, but we're up here to talk about this uh, application up amongst the cells right now, but that's just the rules that we have to follow. Um, well said, Phil. Um, I agree with what Phil just said to, to summarize what you said. I, you couldn't have said it any better in my words. Uh, so any other comments on that? Um, I would, ahead, I mean, sir. I would agree with maybe not the entire length of 15th, but for that big chunk of 15th, there isn't any C-17 on that side. It's mostly residential. I feel like within the NC zoning, there's plenty of business opportunity, and I appreciate your passion for trying to fit with the neighborhood, Andy. And I think the, I think the gas is the tipping point. I think those overhead lights and the canopy, even though you'd be closed, is just – I do think about that, having that in the back of your yard looking, you know, at that, at that particular business instead of just a one-story – when you look at the NC zoning, the one-story kind of residential scale – um, seems like it would be a good fit, but I would maybe, um, no, uh, and uh, I understand. And so I appreciate the Andy, passion. Andy, it's, 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 I'm sorry. It's not a conversation back and forth. This is a statement that should be just amongst, uh, I'm going to, first of all, we can't hear you and it's not on the record because you're not by the mic. And I, and I understand your passion for this. I truly do. But at this point, we're just discussing this amongst ourselves, uh, um, Go right ahead. Oh, so anyways, I, I know that the product you've done on Salt East and Atlas is well, like it's well done. And I think you have great employees and I think it's a good fit for that particular neighborhood. I think for this one, the gas is kind of that tipping point. I think, you know, a nice market, you will still have a good business opportunity there, but it'll fit better with the neighborhood as it's currently zoned um, with those restrictions. And I feel like it doesn't open the door to if later down the road it becomes 
all the other type of C-17 uses. So I, I, I kind of think keeping with the current zoning fits better with the neighborhood character of what's surrounding it. Um, but I do you know, encourage that if you do that, to still connect with the community that surrounds you and get some feedback. And I think you will be very successful by doing that. So that would be what I would say. So. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, go ahead, John. Just some thoughts. You know, this, this reminds me of, uh, you know, we had uh, a hearing on a PUD kind of over in the Gilbert area and, you know, the lady to told us how great it was to look out over the pasture and eat her cornflakes in the, in the morning and, and how awful it is that it's going to develop. And, and, and I, I, the gentleman that lives in, in the uh, houses in the county to the east and I, I feel your pain. Uh, that said, I don't think it's realistic that you're going to look into the pasture and see the deer or whatever. It, it, for it's a, thinking it's going to be a vacant lot forever it isn't realistic, you know. And and as Commissioner McCracken said, you know, there's any number of other retail, and it, it could be an urgent care facility, it could be a doctor's office, it could be all kinds of different things, and. Uh, it's going to develop someday. You know, it's not going to be uh, vacant forever. So, you know, your world is going to change, and you know, the sunset may may go away. That said, I tend to agree with the others that have spoken. You know, I also underlined in my packet the same uh, sort of words that uh, Commissioner Ward discussed uh, out of the comp plan that de describe a, a walking. You know, uh, mixed use buildings with uh you know on the corners with some ground floor frontage blah 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 and it it, it it paints a softer picture the other thing that concerns me here is uh a fact you know we have a, a worksheet in fact fact a13 states that the remaining properties to the north east and west are residential in nature and uh a uh, lady that has lived in her house for 60 years on the corner of 15th and Best, you know, your, your neighborhood's changed, but, you know, it's still residential. And I think we have a duty, even to the people in the county, you know, you're our neighbors, uh, to at least kind of hold the line. That we can't stop some development, but uh, maybe something a little different than uh, what what's proposed would be a a little less objectionable uh, in, in this case. So uh, I, I struggle with this. Thank you, John. Uh, okay, Lynn, oh, Peter, go ahead. Well, I just, I oh, just agree ahead. with Mr. Ward uh, that the properties all around are, are not C-17, you know, they're, they're residential. But reading some of the community identity here, if I may, the citizens are to be well-informed, responsive, and involved in community decisions. Something came up tonight about not notifying people over 300 feet. Well, whatever it is, the city follows whatever the state statutes are. Just encourage you when you're walking, you post it too, to you look at it and, and see what it's about. Because we have the same concern that you have, it's making sure people understand what's going on. So you can come down here and talk. Another thing, Coeur d'Alene will strive to be livable for medium and low income levels, including young families, working class, so forth. That's one of our comprehensive plan issues. Recognize, we also are to recognize neighborhoods and district identities. And I think that from what I heard here, I, I do not, I'm not in favor of this uh, rezone I, I, for those reasons. Um, I have a lot to add. Uh, Mr. Singh does it, do a great job. I, he's, he's trying his hardest to push a fat foot into a small shoe. So I think that this is not the right thing in the right place. I think the neighborhood community, this is a neighborhood, so NC fits. I also do worry they've got a, a hillside of lumber up there that's a burn pile that could happen, a fire could happen, and they gotta get out of that street and that road. So I worry about the community and its livability when we start to put in tanker trucks and uh, loading trucks and uh, market share and so I do think the impact is too high on what is dom predominantly a residential neighborhood um, you know I, I I respect Mr. Singh for trying to do as much as he can to make this fit but I don't think this is the spot for what he's proposing so 
again, I would say no to this. Okay. Thanks, one. Appreciate it. Okay. With that all being said, anyone want to make a motion? Oh, John, please do it. No, John. Anyone? John's good at this. Uh, go right ahead. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we got new procedures. Yeah, I think I need some help on this. It's not quite Hey, the matter coming before the Planning and Zoning Commission on January the 9th to consider ZZ-124, a uh, 24 request to zone change from NC, Neighborhood Commercial, to C-17 Zoning District. The applicant, GS-4 Property LLC, and the parcel legally described as a parcel of land in the northwest quarter of Section 7, Township 50, North uh, Range 3 West, Boise Meridian, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, also described as the intersection of 15th Street and Best Avenue. Um, the Planning Commission finds with regard to facts A, 1, to, uh, one through 23. Randy, I don't think you have to do the first eight or nine of those. Is that correct? That's a given? Uh, yeah, you can you can say A1 through 9 are okay. adopted. You yeah. adopt those as, as yeah, a Yeah, these are just the fact that notices were sent, the Still. date things were done, the date of the hearing, and, and so on. Uh, and the property is, is within the city of Coeur d'Alene, the existing zoning and uh, neighborhood commercial NC, and the comprehensive plan uh, future lap designation is mixed use, mixed use low place uh, type. Breaks it down into an A10 and the A11. A11 specifically saying no mixed use low, pla low places for highly walkable areas, uh, typically up to four stories. It does go beyond that. And to me, this part, the request is inconsistent with that. Uh, the other comprehensive plan goals are applicable. Uh, A12, the community identity, the citizens have been informed. They have been. Uh, Coeur d'Alene does strive to a livable, uh, uh, a livable, livable community. Uh, on growth, uh, develop a mix of land uses through the city. That is the intent of what the plan tries to achieve and to ensure proper high quality infrastructure to accommodate community needs and future growth. Most of that can be accommodated on this property consistent with such things as utilities that are available irrespective of the use. Uh, let me go on to my... <clears throat> okay, in the A13, the neighborhood is a mix of commercial and residential uses. A gas station, Mini Mart, is located at the northwest corner of 15th and Best. To the south is all multifamily, uh, duplex housing units. The remaining properties to the north, east, and west are residential in nature. There would be frontage improvements for sidewalks, stormwater, et cetera, as required for any development. There is adequate capacity for public water and uh, for any particular use that's uh, allowed at this time. The nearest public sanitary sewers on 15th Street to the west, but it can be extended to serve this property. And the fire department review the plan in detail uh, if the app went and if it is submitted for building permit. Likewise, the police department does not have any concern at this time with the proposed zone change. The site is generally flat geographically and uh, is the natural state with grass and trees located on it. The proposed zone change would not adversely affect the surrounding area with traffic. That is item number 20 and that is uh, incorrect. It would affect the traffic, both the type of vehicle, the frequency of trips, and the access in and out of the site. Uh, 15th Street is a major collect collector that experiences up to a thousand trips a day. Uh, uh, the Metropolitan Planning Organization indicates the potential maximum of 1,200 trips. This proposed use, if approved, would not exceed that, we don't believe, but regardless, it would change the frequency, which uh, is inconsistent with the overall intent of a walkable community. 
both the NC and C-17 zoning districts have, do have design guidelines and parking requirements. The applicant's uh, narrative and testimony states that it will be uh, have low profile, low profile signs, no LED speaker boards. Uh, all of that is true, but the bottom, uh, the main issue is, is the zoning appropriate? And in this case, uh, I believe the zoning is incompatible with the existing zoning and uses uh, other than on the northeast corner of best. Uh, everything north and south of the subject property into the west, uh, south of best, is in a residential use. Therefore, the, pro the proposal is not in conformance in the concept, plan, goals, objectives, and policy. Public facilities and utilities are available to adequately serve the use, but they are there for any use, not just this one. Physical characteristics of the site do make it potentially suitable for the request as far as having the proper size for, to accommodate the uses being requested, but the proposal would adversely affect the surrounding neighborhood with traffic, uh, traffic, neighborhood character, and the existing land uses. The Planning Commission, pursuant to the foregoing findings of fact and conclusions of law, has determined that the existing zone change does not comply with the required evaluation criteria and recommends that the City Council uh, not adopt the C-17 zoning. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate that. Um, also, uh, any other discussion on the matter before I ask for a second? And I just want to add, um, I agree totally what Commissioner Ward said, uh, and then my my decision was based on all the public testimony I heard tonight as well um, on this matter, uh, not just getting a package, and, um, and not that we didn't hear what the applicant said, but uh, as a commissioner, we have to be uh, somewhat aware of how certain items affect neighborhoods, and this is the one that would affect the neighborhood the most. Um, any other discussion? Do you need a second? I need yes. a second. <laughs> Please to second it. Okay, I have Lutra. first by Commission Award, second by Luther. Can we have roll call, please? Fleming. Yes. Ingalls. Yes. Lutrup. Yes. Coppice. Yes. McCracken. Yes. Ward? Yes. Messina? Yes. Okay. The item um, does not pass. Uh, what's the right of appeal on this if the uh, it, applicant wants to appeal to City Council or not? No, it would go on to City Council. So there is, um, we need to change our zoning code actually. So Randy and I looked at our code, says that if a zone change is recommended denial by the Planning Commission, it would stop and not go on to City Council but the state statutes call for it to continue on, so it will go on to city council, likely the second meeting in February. Okay. Or the first one in March. Okay, thank so, you. So if it's appealed, it goes to council, is it? No, no. 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 We're not it'll automatically go on so in all, with in your recommendation. Fashion. No. Oh, okay. Correct. They will hear it. And they will hear it with your recommendation. And they will either determine whether we are correct or whether they want to continue Correct. Council Singh. will make the final determination well, on it. What I'd like to suggest is Two there's shots. a lot of people here. Is there a reason for them to look at the council agenda to see this on the council agenda at some future time in case they want to come and listen? Yes, and we will send out the notices to the 300 feet. We'll post the site and publish in the paper again for that hearing. So with if you're council. interested in that, ch check with Hillary or something. So how, how you get notified or how, what you look at the city agenda what whatnot so, so that you don't have to see something on the Posted on the, the property because there won't be. Okay. Will it be on the website? Does it show up on the website? It does, yes. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, it will, yes. There'll be a second okay. hearing. Okay, at this time, we're going to, uh, the public hearing for that item is voted on and closed. We're going to take a short recess and we've got a, um, we close this? Yeah. You want to take a recess? For no, we'll formally recess this. it. You yeah. don't adjourn. We'll formally this? recess it. We're we'll closing the public testimony yeah. on item ZC1-4. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was 20 seconds. Did your action, so you're good on that one. Yeah. Oh,
with that. So, so we'll just, we need a recess and we'll come. So we can be in recess to the workshop. We'll go right into the workshop. Yeah, yeah. Chop, chop. Oh, I'm sorry for Mr. Singh. He doesn't I heard nice the workshop in there, and I, for some reason I was thinking it was yeah. done. Well, that's good. I'm ready. Yeah.